Hi, my name is Joe. Hi, my name is Bonnie. Welcome to the Lechner Theater. Ninety percent of the time, it's just Bonnie and I. Our uh, adult kids and their spouses will come, uh, you know, once a month, maybe more. And we have some regular friends that come as well. So we're in here at least four or five times a week. We do some streaming too. We watch a few shows that way, but we really enjoy spending time in here. This is our date night space. It is. So we'll watch, you know, a lot of movies, and we do sp stream some shows. Um, we also uh, will watch as many Astros games as we can in here. In fact, recently, my uh, now 99-year-old mother was in here and we were watching a game. And when it was over, she said she liked it here better than watching it live, not only for the experience, but there was no traffic to get out. <laughs> This is a 7.2.4 system. It's all clips, but they're not from the same line. The left and right speakers are RF3s, uh, Mark IIs. Um, I've had these since 2001. Uh, I just can't find a good reason to replace them. They just sound fantastic. The center speaker is an RC64, a fantastic speaker. The sides are SA, 500s as well as the back and then for Atmos I'm using 3650s I believe. The subwoofers are uh, Dr. Shu, uh, HSU's VTF, 3s, Mark 5s and then I also have uh, the uh, Aurora bass shakers with a BSA amp. <laughs> The sound is totally immersive. I love the clarity. I love the, the bass. And I love the fact that I can actually understand what people are saying that I don't have to ask Joe, hey, what did they just say? You know, because sometimes when you're watching in a movie theater, you can't quite hear exactly what's being said. So I just love the, the total immersive quality of everything. And I love our theater posters that we made together and our little concession area over there. And I just love the charm of it and that we get to share it together and that we created it together. So I think it sounds pretty good, uh, decent, I'd say, uh, but you know it's always a work in progress. There's always a tweak. There's always something that has to be bumped up, bumped down. That's but what you love about it. That is what I love about it. That is true. Um, so I think it sounds pretty good. Uh, I'll leave it at that. It sounds pretty good to me. So we've been married now for 36 years, and we've been together for 41 years. Uh, we've enjoyed movie theater, um, a dedicated home movie theater, since our house that we had in 2018. And we've been in this home now for about two and a half years. And so really since 2018, we've had a dedicated movie theater. Um, and it's just been a lot of fun to come up with all the little personal touches together. Yeah. So we've had 
a dedicated home theater, as Bonnie said, for you know a few years now. Uh, previous to that, in our last home, it was in our living room. And that was, we bought that house in... 2001. 2001. Mm-hmm. So we've had home theater since then. However, we've had some form of theater, whether it was a 2.0 or sometimes even less than that, um, ever since we were married for the first time. So there's not one part of this theater that I like. Um, collectively, you know, I, I put together the best that I could do for, for audio, video, um, acoustics, and aesthetics and comfort. Um, my favorite part of, of this theater, honestly, is watching movies with Bonnie. It's a, it's a blessing to be able to watch movies with your best friend. Mm-hmm. Well, I love being able to share this with Joe. That's awesome. Um, but one of my favorite things about it is the fact that we dedicated it to my dad, who was a huge um, movie buff, and he would have just loved the space. He's been gone since 92, but we um, really think of him a lot in our journey with our home theater. It's true. We often will say that he would have loved to watch movies in here with us. Mm -hmm. This is our home theater journey. I hope you enjoyed our story. We enjoyed sharing with you. Welcome back to the Everything is Bigger in Texas Home Theater Tours. I'm your host, Hater Ray Cowboy, and I'm not in Dallas anymore. I am in Fulcher, Texas, about 45, 50 minutes away from Houston, but right now I'm sitting in a super cool, super awesome Star Wars themed home theater, and I've got the homeowners, Joe and Bonnie, here to tell us all about it. Joe, Bonnie, thank you for letting me into your amazing home and letting me showcase your theater on the channel. Hey, thanks for coming. It's It's been been a pleasure. It's been great spending the day with you and sharing our theater with you. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. You you did a very good job on this theater. So we got some stuff that we're going to show you on the outside. He's got a nice two-channel setup. He's got some showcases that he's got with his with his blu-rays that he kind of customized so we're going to show you guys that stuff right now you ready yeah let's Let's go all right okay so this was initially a big closet uh it had solid doors and it was just used for storage Uh, bonnie and i decided that we were going to make this into a media closet so i put the French doors on, emptied the room out, and put movie racks in here to hold the media. Uh, We also decorated it with a popcorn machine and some vintage projectors and other various items. And this is where we keep all of our movies. Okay, so we checked out the two-channel setup and we checked out his his Blu-ray collection. Now let's talk about this beautiful theater that you guys have in here. And first thing I want to say is when I saw the pictures, I was very impressed with it. But walking in here, man, it's a beautiful, beautiful home theater. You did an excellent job. I really like all the memorabilia stuff that you have, the Star Wars themes, the figurines. And normally at some point during this interview, I would ask Joe, I would ask you, is your wife tolerant or is she partake in this with you but I don't have to do that because she's sitting right next to you (laughs) so it was very interesting when Joe emailed me we were talking back and forth he goes oh by the way my wife is going to be joining us on the tour and I went oh okay well that's that's different because this is like a 99% 99 99.9% male driven hobby so it was refreshing when he told me that it was going to be him and his wife and I wanted to showcase you guys because you don't typically see this. And I know a lot of husbands, I'm not married myself, but I know a lot of husbands, they, you know, they basically just have this hobby by themselves and then they go on YouTube and, you know, share it with everybody else. But I'm really curious to see how you both came together and shared in this, this journey together. So why don't you tell us a little bit about maybe how long you've been married? I know we talked about it a little bit before, but how that, how did that come about? Well, I grew up enjoying movies with my dad, you know, comedies, horror movies, um, action movies, even like cartoons as a kid. So I've always loved movies and Joe and I just 
from early on, loved going to the movies together as teenagers. We met at 13 and 14 years old. So it was just so cool when we got to a point in our lives where we could have our own home theater and date night is any night when you have your own theater. So we've just loved putting this all together and adding our own personal touches to it. So when you say date night, you don't typically go to the theater anymore. Very rarely. Very rarely? No reason to. Yeah. Not when you can pause and take a break oh, and yeah. come back. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's blissful. You don't have to worry about teenagers. You don't have to worry about, you know, the projector stopping, the movie stopping halfway through. So what what is your, your been experience with uh, watching movies with your wife? Uh, you know, I'm a very lucky person. Um, as you said, most most guys don't have the opportunity to watch you know with their spouse um, this has just been awesome the whole experience of it we've always loved watching movies together and being able to do it here is great and i'm as i said i'm very lucky to uh to to have bonnie to watch all these movies with <laughs> you know and i always say that she lets me do this um you know but the truth is this is not joe's room this is not a man cave this is our theater you know, we share it. It's our home. And we just love being in here. That's awesome. So how long have you guys been married? And what, and I know you, you mentioned it earlier, but I want to convey to everybody how long you've been married and then how long you've also been doing this hobby together. So we have been married um, over 36 years. Okay. Uh, we are junior high sweethearts. Um you know, we've been together longer than we were apart, you know, before we knew each other. You know, as Bonnie said, we we met when we were 13, 14 years old. And, you know, except for regular tumbles in life, right. we've always been together. Wow, that's um, awesome. Yeah, and yeah, it is, it is. I'm, I'm a very lucky man. And we had our first dedicated home theater in 2018 at okay. our last home. So other than that, you know, other than having a really cool at the time living room set up since we got married in 1987, mm. <laughs> you know, but dedicated home theater has been since 2018. So, okay. Yeah. So what would you say? So that's pretty recent. That's only five years ago. Mm -hmm. How did you guys get into the almost hobby? Almost six years, actually. Almost, actually, almost six years. Yeah, March you're right. will be six years. Yeah. yeah. How did, how did that start since that's relative? I mean, you've been married for so long. What got you guys into theater? I know you said that you watched movies with your with your father, but what was the deciding factor where you guys went, hey, you know what, we should we should build a home theater and start, you know, start this hobby? Well, for me, ever since I was a kid, I've always been into audio, always been, you know, I love music. Um, okay. And so even as a small child, you know, I've always had a stereo. You know, all the way back from you know first and second grade um, when I was able to start you know going and enjoying the movies uh, you know I always did I went to movies with my brother and with my sister and uh, mostly my brother uh, you know would walk down to the theater and, and see you know whatever we could um, so when we got married and when we were kids basically um, we had what a, I think a 22 inch television, oh, man. two speakers, <laughs> a, uh, a cheapo Sony receiver, and a hi fi VCR. Wow. And this is in what, 1987. Mm -hmm. uh, so we paid $400. We had $400. <laughs> that was a lot of money back, back then. That was a lot of <laughs> money. It was a lot, it was a lot yeah. of money. But people that we knew had no idea that, that movies were in stereo. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were watching home theater basically <laughs> you know with with our little 22 inch tv which was big then yeah mm -hmm. you know so we've been doing this together for a long time um when we bought our first home we um i did home theater okay. in the living room um you know a 5.1 setup then it was a 7.1 setup and we had a 65 inch dlp wow. television mm -hmm. and then also, when we, um, once our kids grew up and moved out on their own, then we decided we wanted to downsize, figuratively speaking anyway. Mm -hmm. And when we did that, we thought, well, when we build our house, let's build in a dedicated home theater. 
So that was kind of our consolation prize. We successfully raised our kids. Let's have a dedicated home theater. So we did that in our last home and then, um, you know, kind of did some tweaks on it when we built this house and, you know, also decided on a little bit different home theater than we did on the last one. So, so would you say that was a joint idea or was it your idea? Whose, whose, whose idea was it to, to do that? Did it just come about naturally? Like, Hey, we should do this because we both, you know, like this. I think really Joe first did the research on it because he's the audio video guy, you know, um, you know, certified TV VCR repair guy from the old days. Yeah. So he, he's you know, legit. he is big time. I can so work on VCRs. He can, he can fix your VCR. Yes. Nice. So, you know, because of his background and his experience, it was really his brainchild to begin with. Okay. And then we collaborated on it together, but all the behind the scenes stuff is really his doing. Yeah. Now, Joe told me that, you know, most wives, they'll be like, oh, I don't know about this stuff. I don't know what this is called, but you, you know your stuff. You, you try to, you, you're humble about it, but <laughs> I think you, you know your, your, your speakers and everything. Because even talking to you guys before, it's apparent that you, you know, you may not know as much as Joe, like behind the scenes stuff, but you know your, your stuff. And we were talking about, you know, during, we were watching some of the demo scenes and you were explaining. So I can see your, your passion and it's, it's very it's very unique, but it's also refreshing to see another female that's in this this hobby and that you guys are doing it together. Yeah, well, thanks. I mean, we've really had fun throughout this journey, and yeah. it's been awesome. Yeah, we have. We've had a lot of fun doing mm -hmm. this together, and don't let her fool you. She knows an awful lot about this. <laughs> well, we she love does. being able to share it with family and friends, too. It's that's been great. so, so much fun, honestly. It is. Yeah, and you actually got some friends coming over in here in a little bit, huh? Yes. We do. They should be here any, <laughs> any moment. Any moment, yeah. Yeah, they, they should. Yeah. <laughs> so along that lines, how often do you actually use your theater? Because you'll be surprised some of the people that we talk to in this, in this, this hobby some of these people have really nice home theaters. They've spent a lot of money, put a lot of effort, and then you ask them how often they use it, and they're like, ah, I rarely even use it. So how often are you guys in here? I'm in here pretty much any night that I'm off work. Since I'm a night shift nurse, it's, you know, so that's, I'd say at least three to four nights a week I'm in here awesome. with Joe. Yeah, and I'm here in this room watching movies or something, you know, four or five, sometimes six nights a week. You know, we, uh, we we use the room. It is the most used room in this house. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I said earlier, I don't remember last time I turned the TV in the living room on other to other than to watch some YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I want to highlight that really quick because you said that you're you're a night nurse. So I just want to take a minute to, to thank you for everything that you do. I have friends that are nurses. I know that's got to be incredibly rough, especially during COVID. How long have you been a nurse? 10 years, a little ten over years, 10 years. Ten years. Mm -hmm. wow. Second well, career. Thank you for second crew. Yeah. Uh, thank you for all that you do. I know that it's, it's working nights is one thing, but working nights and being a nurse, I can't imagine what that's like and having to be around sick people all the time and then during COVID. So we really appreciate what, what you do. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know you do too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. It's a whole different world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you had a home theater before at your other home. What was this? What was that space like? What did you have in that setup? It was almost all the same stuff. Okay. Um, so you brought the stuff. Yeah. With it, yeah you. Every, okay. Everything came from there. Other than surround speakers, I had some. I think they were R fourteens there. Um, these fit this space better. Okay. Um, you know, because they're angled, so you can walk by without hitting your head. Right. Um, you know, the seats, the screen, the equipment, all the speakers, other than the subwoofers, which are new, um, all came from there. Okay. Yeah, and most of these speakers, uh, I've actually had a long time. These front speakers, the uh, they're RC3s. Um, I bought in 2001, okay. and they're they're just great speakers. So, you know, I, I've had this stuff for a long time. Some of it. Mm -hmm. And you said that you lost a little bit of, of of room size compared to your other room. So, what was the room size in your your other room before this one? So that room was 12 feet wide by 19 feet long That's with nine foot room. ceilings. It was a great room. Mm -hmm. it, it really was. But it didn't sound as good as this. No, this no, room, no, no, you're absolutely right. See, she does know her stuff. <laughs> so this room is 12 wide by 13 long 
with 12 foot ceilings. Okay. Um, there's a tray ceiling in around the perimeter. It drops to, I think, 11 feet. This room set up audio wise much better, much easier than the other room, even though you uh, a rectangular room is supposed to sound better. Right. This one just set up so much easier. Now, can you pinpoint to anything of why that is, why this room sounds better than the one previously? Well, I'd say probably the biggest reason is our acoustic panels that are also our movie posters. I think that's the biggest game changer because when we got these about a year ago, we had already been in the house for a year and a half and the sound, it was just, just like magic, you know, yeah. just boom. Changed it a lot. Yeah, it really did. So I'd say that's the single biggest contributing factor to the sound. Yeah. Yeah. And acoustic panel, we talk about this all the time. Any YouTube channel that you watch that does home theater, get some acoustic panels because it makes a world of difference. It it completely changes the room, gets rid of the slap echo, and just really enhances the audio fidelity. It does. Now, talking about these acoustic panels, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Because this was a, a... One thing I want people to, to see in, in this video with Joe and Bonnie is that they've done a lot of this together. It isn't just, oh, we're in the room together. You guys have actually done a lot of the stuff yourselves together. So why don't you tell us about those acoustic panels? Sure. So these acoustic panels, they're, um, we, we made them. They're, um, the frames came from ATS. Uh, they're stuffed with rock wool. Um, and then the prints that you can see here, um, they're, it's a, it's a acoustically transparent cotton print that we had printed and uh, printed as movie posters and w together we assembled and and chose and chose and theater friends right and and to give credit on this she chose all of these posters nice yeah these are these were her choice that's awesome yes and then you know together we stapled the fabric around stuffed mm -hmm. them mounted them mm -hmm. um you know we we did it together so you know your movies then, if you picked all this stuff out, I mean, I'm looking around at the different posters, you've got very good taste. Yeah, thank <laughs> yes, you. Yes, she does. These were all great movies, so, and add a lot of charm to the room, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your your speakers. What what are the models that you have on your, your speakers? I know you've got Klipsch. Yeah, so these are Klipsch. They're, the left and right is um, RF3 Mark three okay i'm sorry mark two um the center is a rc64 and i think it's a mark three the side and rear surround are sa500s okay. so technically these are the atmos modules that sit on top to gotcha. do the bouncy house stuff but there's a switch on these that you can use them for surrounds okay um so i've got those you know as my uh, uh sides and rears the ceiling atmos speakers oh gosh i think they're um 3650s i think um the clips also okay and then the subwoofers i'm not gonna remember the the model <laughs> they're they're uh they're shoe doctor shoes um 15 inch woofers okay and then oro bass shakers in the front and back row nice now I know about shoe research because that was the first legit sub that I bought. You know, I was coming from a home theater in the box and when I started doing my research and I was like, oh, I need to buy everything separate. I need to buy, you know, dedicated sub. I researched and I didn't have a lot of money at the time, but I saw like, H, uh, shoe research kept coming up for value. Yeah. And so I was like, let me give these a shot. And I got an eight inch. I don't remember the model name. I still have it and I have it in my living room which is an open floor and that thing still hits hard. Yeah. So when I got that, I was impressed coming from a home theater in the box subwoofer. I was oh, like, yeah. Oh my goodness, this is incredible. So then I game upgraded changer. to, yeah, game changer. Yeah. Yeah. Then I upgraded to a 12 inch sub and I had that for years and just sold that last year. So I was interested when you told me you had shoe research, yeah. I was interested because I was like, I've always wanted to hear the 15 inch subs and I mm. almost bought them, man. They, they hit really yeah. hard. They hit really good. And those are, ported right they are ported they're ported and they have the variable tuning that you can do they do either so i've got these set i think these are on eq1 for whatever that means um yeah. the q damping factor is whatever it's set in the middle 
I'm not really sure what that does. Um, I, I read about it. But yeah, it, it, it comes in the manual. It tells you which it one is set. I don't remember yeah, what I it went, is. Yeah, I went by the manual, yeah. you know, what it says. Um, it is ported. There are two ports. So I have one plugged and one open. And uh, and they sound great. I'm, I'm really happy yeah. with them. I mean, Dr. Shoe subs are supposed to be budget subwoofers but you get so much you get more. so much these yeah. are not budget subwoofers yeah i know? was i was very impressed not only with the sub but with the bass shakers that you have mm -hmm. which we'll talk about but you mentioned this in the beginning of the, of the video bonnie that the bases that's one of your favorite things right about this oh theater? yeah i've always <laughs> loved the bass so would yeah. you call yourself a bass head I think I'm a bass head, yeah. You're the guys. See? It is possible right. to, for a female to, have, to be a bass head. That's right. Music, too. Love okay. Bass. Yeah. <laughs> nice. What kind of what kind of music do you guys listen to? Mostly rock. Yeah. Yeah. M mostly Anything rock. Anything from, like, grunge and 90s to classic rock to... That's awesome. Yeah. I've been getting into jazz lately. Okay. Um, really, really enjoying it. A um, little bit of jazz. Um, some... Indie stuff. Indie stuff, uh, Americana. Americana. Yeah. Uh, a lot of stuff you've never heard of. Yeah. Uh, mo most people haven't. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a jazz person. I, yeah. I tried it. I couldn't really get into it, but I can appreciate it. My dad was a big jazz guy yeah. and a jazz musician, so. <laughs> yeah, li listening to it on uh, what I'm going to call is a good system makes it tolerable. Okay. Makes it listenable. Yeah. Um, so it, it helps. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so tell me about your screen. What type of screen is it? What size? Mm. all that stuff okay so this is a silver ticket it's 120 inch it's a okay. 16 by 9 um i think they call this the white it's got a one-to-one -one gain okay i, I think. have the same screen just 100 inch yeah they're great yeah. they're great screens great value great value we actually bought this screen as a temporary measure uh five years ago almost <laughs> six years ago mm -hmm. um you know we're gonna buy this screen and if we like it then you know we'll get something better later. Right. Well, just like with my speakers, I haven't found a reason to get something okay. better. Right. These are these are great screens. So being that it's a 16 by 9 screen, I made masking panels for it. Um, masking panels uh, they they are just foam with adhesive um, jewelry box black velvet liner wrapped yeah. around them. Uh, the bottom are friction fit, okay. and the top. I hot glued magnets to the top of the screen and inside the panel and I made a little tool to hold them and put them in place and they work perfectly. They work really good and it really does help the contrast because when you, you know, you said, hey, I want you to see the screen before I put them up there and I'm used to it. Like I have the yeah. same, you know, the same screen pretty much just in a hundred inch and so I have the black bars and then you put one panel up because you have four panels. Yeah, four panels. You put one panel up, and then you could see the panel, and then you could see where the black bars in is, and immediately you just see the contrast just, just pop out B at big, you. Big, big, big difference. When you can do the side-by-side -side comparison and right. see it right. with and without. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's a perceived contrast change. Right. Uh, but it, it works. It works. Yeah. It works very well. It's something that I've I've been kicking around in my mind that I might have to do at, at some point, and it's... It's super cheap. What, what would you say uh, those supplies to make the, the four panels cost you? I think I'm about $45 yeah. in. That's, that's, that's a great value. <laughs> it's a great, great value. crazy good deal. You know what? Right. Maybe, maybe 50 with the magnets. Okay. Yeah. And you did all that yourself? I did. Did you do any research or you just winged it? <laughs> I just I just winged it. Yeah. Well, you did, a, um, you did an excellent job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Very innovative. Innovative. Very, very innovative. So... I'm looking around and I'll sh put some B-roll up here for you guys. You got a lot of cool figurines, mm -hmm. action figures. Why don't you tell us about that? Because I've talked about that in, in a previous video that I made a couple years ago about personalizing your theater. So mm -hmm. tell me why you decided to go one with, you know, mainly Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And then like, how do, how do you keep all this stuff from not like just completely uh, falling over? Right. <laughs> So the the figurines and all the different things in the room, honestly, most of them are either garage sale or giveaway stuff. Or um, our kids. Or our kids. Some of them are yeah. our kids' toys. And mm -hmm. um, so they're just in here. Um, the majority of it is Star Wars. I did not plan on a Star Wars-themed room. <laughs> this just happened. We, we had it, so why not use it? Um, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's a lot of it. Um, to keep everything from falling down, because it will. There's a <laughs> lot of bass going on in here. Um, we use a lot of um, blue tack 
uh, museum putty. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of that. It's un great. under each and everything. Um, the the decorations that are on the wall, there's some movie reels and, and other various things. Um, cut up pieces of packing foam, the black packing foam that when you buy your receiver mm -hmm. is, is wrapped in. Um, little pieces that are tucked in and shoved in different places. Mm -hmm. um, several places in here that you can't see. Um, I have cut up bicycle inner tubes that I've just rolled up and shoved into places and it, mm -hmm. and it dampens. Um, I've used uh, quite a bit of um, weather stripping on the doors okay. um, and then some more uh, felt pad on the door to keep them from slapping from the base. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that's one thing I noticed about this system because I was telling you earlier, I've had a couple of clips speakers and I know a lot of people in the comments or some people that have clips or have had clips before, sometimes clips can be a little bright on the on, on the higher end. They can. I didn't notice that in this system, man. And that's a testament to one, you dialing it in, having the acoustic panels and yeah, I didn't notice any rattling. I didn't notice anything shaking. Um, even like even this guy, does that guy move up there when you when you're playing stuff? Probably so. <laughs> I'm, but it's, I'm sure. it's hanging. What do you have that fish wire yeah, or something? Fish, fishing line. Fishing line. Yeah, okay. fishing line. Yeah. yeah. But it, it it sounds amazing in here, man. I was very impressed. I mean, we were sitting on the front row, you know, in the money seat mm -hmm. and with the bass shakers and everything. I was really impressed with the bass response and those bass shakers. So tell me a little bit about uh, the bass shakers because you've got them, you've got a kind of a unique setup here, right? Um, <laughs> I do. Okay, so the bass shakers, um, these are, I, I think they're called Aurora bass shakers okay. um, with a BSA amp that came from Parts Express. Okay. Um, I've got two in the front row and two in the back row. So the front row has three seats and the back row has four seats. In order to make this work, they um, they share. So the seats have a mount in them that was built purposeful for bass shakers. Okay. So it transfers the energy from the bass shaker across the entire plane of the seats through the armrest from one seat to the other. Gotcha. So being that Bonnie and I are in here 90% of the time, just us, mm -hmm. the, the first ones are our seats mm -hmm. in the front. Um, and then we put them in the back also. But since there are four seats in the back, I pushed the, I mounted the shakers on the sides so that the energy transfers more to the outside seats. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it works really well. It works very, very well. And I like that I can, I can feel that it's, I can feel that it's not the bass that's doing it. Like I feel the bass, but I can tell that there's something else there but it's not overwhelming and it does, it's not distracting, but I like that tactile feel. So it doesn't feel forced. Right. So I was going to ask you, Bonnie, did you notice a difference from before when he didn't have them? And then after when he, when he put them in? Oh yeah. I mean, it is even that much more immersive because you feel like you're really there with whatever's happening in the movie. Yeah. I think it just added to it tremendously because i know we had talked about it for a while years and then oh, a, really? friend of oh, his, okay. yeah. a friend of his got them and was like oh we gotta check that we gotta i'm right. like okay well you know let's see <laughs> so your friend had them you got a chance to demo them or I just did, i did not say i did not just just his word of mouth and he okay. put in i think it's on his living room sofa he trusted Interesting. yeah i just trust him <laughs> right i think it's on his living room sofa and he just continuously told me you've got to do this you've got to do this because he's seen our theater he's been here right. okay. you know so he's like right. you this would be such a awesome game changer for you guys yeah. too so i finally did it yeah and does he have the same ones no or does he have no ones? they're i don't know what what they are okay. i'm not i'm not sure what what his are they're not the same though right. okay and then what type of seats are these where'd you get these from hmm. okay so the seats came from a local place okay um but they are semi-custom, um, meaning you go in and order them, and then the people that make them, they're hand-built seats. Um, the gentleman that made them was in constant communication um, about how high the seats were going to be, how wide they were going to be, what type of padding. In fact, he even suggested to put in the mounts for these, um, wow. for these base shakers. Um, so I did. 
he was so concerned about getting it just right for he, us and our needs, which he was, was awesome. He, he was. He was, did a very, very good job on the seats. Um, I've had these seats now almost six years. Okay. And they, they look new still. Yeah, they, they don't wear down, and we're in here all the time. So one of the interesting things about, a few things interesting about these seats. One of them is when we bought them, we chose purposely not to do electric seats. Okay. These are full manual seats. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why is we knew that we were going to keep them for a very, very long time. And we didn't want the potential for motors to go out and not be able to replace them. No mechanisms. No, no mechanisms. Yeah. Right. So the other interesting thing that we did in here is we don't have a riser in this room. Um, and uh, as you can probably see, these seats are a little bit higher that we're in the back row and mm -hmm. these seats are a little bit higher. So we had these seats built seven inches higher than the front row. So no need for a riser, even in this room, which is relatively short without even reclining. You can see, you can see the oh, bottom yeah. of the screen from here and in full recline, you know, there's never an issue. Yeah, when you when you sent me the the pictures, uh, when you emailed me, and I saw, I was like, oh, he's got a second row. I automatically thought you had a riser, right. and I didn't didn't even know. Actually, I didn't even know until you told me, and I, and then I looked. I'm like, oh yeah, there is no right. riser. Yeah. And then I was like, oh well, I guess the riser is built into the seat. Right. And you were like, well, not really. But. <laughs> right. Then now one compromise that we had to make in this room because we did lose six feet of length mm -hmm. from the other room That's into right. this one. Mm -hmm. So one compromise we had to make was seating placement. Um, two rows of, of seats in a room that's this length is hard to do, right. especially with a 120 inch screen mm -hmm. sitting in front of you. So again, being that 90% of the time it's just Bonnie and I, the seats are where they're at. But when we are hosting a movie night with our friends or our family, um, I physically move this front row forward um, about 10 inches. Um, wow, so that's a lot. <laughs> it is, it is. But it's the only way that we can recline. Otherwise, makes we... Makes it cozier. It, it does make it cozier. <laughs> so that changes the the angle of sound. It changes, mm -hmm. you know, your viewing angle considerably. Right. Um, but so far, no complaints. Awesome. Yeah. So, Bonnie, when you watch movie. I know you guys watch it. We talked about it earlier. You guys watch, you know, different types of movies. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite type of genre or movies mm -hmm. to, to watch when you come in here, if you had a choice? You know, it really depends. I mean, I like the Marvel movies because, you know, there's some comedy, there's some action, there's some love story. It's a little bit of everything. You know, sometimes I like a good horror movie. Joe's not mm. a big horror movie Me fan. Me either. I'm, I'm with not. you on that. Yeah. yeah I'm not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I like, I like comedies. I'm not really a... I mean, some rom-coms I like, but I'm just not a big rom-com person. No. They tend to be a little sappy for me. So, yeah. And Joe, what Action about you? with a little comedy action. mixed action. in, I okay. guess. Yeah. So Marvel movies are perfect right up your alley. Yeah, then. exactly. Okay. Yeah, I'm all about action. Um, I love war movies, action movies, um, Marvel, absolutely. Of course, Star Wars. Mm -hmm. um, so recently, though, uh, we discovered that we are liking some musicals which okay. we never did before. You know, so we've seen West Side Story. We've seen um, Star, Star is Born. Born. We've seen uh, the... What was Bohemian Rhapsody? Bohemian Rhapsody, mm -hmm. of course. Um, and then, uh, so I'm a little embarrassed to say it, but not really. <laughs> um, there's the Romeo and Juliet movie oh, yeah, with okay. Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire you know. Danes. It's from the oh, 90s. I did not know that it's existed. A, yeah, so it's a, yeah, <laughs> watch it. It's not bad. Okay. But it's, okay, so it's a Romeo and Juliet movie. It's, it's all, it's all William Shakespeare in it, and they speak in Shakespearean. Shakespearean. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's also music. It's set in the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, so there's music such as Radiohead and that type in it. Interesting. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's an interesting, it's an interesting movie. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So, what movie are you guys are going to watch tonight when uh, your friends come over? Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Hey, but your friends haven't seen the they haven't seen any of them, right? They yeah, saw they've the first seen two. one they've and two. They've seen the first two. They yeah. haven't yeah. seen the third. Right, okay. right. right. They, in fact, they saw them here. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, this so. is the only theater that they come to. <laughs> right. So. You're right. Yeah, we were talking about that before. It's, it's 
you guys were telling me and I was telling you that it's refreshing because when your friends come over, mm -hmm. they like to watch the movies, but mm -hmm. you can't talk to them about the intricacies right. and stuff like that. And that it's the same thing with me. Like my friends love coming over to the, to, to my theater watching right. movies. But if I try to sit down and talk to them about, you know, bass control and acoustic, oh, they're right. gonna, I'm, they're, I'm gonna get glazed eyes. So. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's refreshing whenever I get to do this with people, especially with, right. you know, a couple that has the same enthusiasm. Right. So that's 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 really cool. So with with that um, topic, um, I'm gonna say, and I've said it <laughs> earlier, um, you are the very first person that knows anything about home theater <laughs> to to be here. Um, you're the first to experience. Now we've had lots of people here, um, but you're the first one. So awesome. yeah. So I have a question for you now. Okay. Um, Put me on the hot seat. I yeah. will. <laughs> so so my question is, being that you are the first person that has any knowledge of this stuff, and that. I put this room together on my own without any real knowledge or experience. Um, what are your thoughts? What do you think of this? So just talking about aesthetics, this looks professional. Hmm. Like the fact that you guys did everything yourself, the acoustic panels, you know, the acoustic placement, the speaker placement. I mean, it was very immersive. One thing that I was telling you guys is that I was, I'm, I'm jealous of mm -hmm. your high ceilings because it just adds to the immersiveness and the expansiveness in that bubble. When you have, my, my ceilings are, are eight foot and it sounds good. I love the yeah. way it sounds, mm -hmm. yeah. but I love the separation that you get from having 12 foot ceilings. It just adds to the immersiveness and mm -hmm. it sounds really good. I'm you envious got, of your bigger room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. My room, my room's longer. Yeah, but yeah. I just don't have that. I don't have the ceiling height. Mm -hmm. And like I was talking, I, I had the option to, to, to go to nine feet, but it was going to be four thousand right. dollars extra. Right. And you know, it was just me by myself, and I was already at my my budget, so I wasn't able to do it. But it still sounds phenomenal. See, and that but, that's where the problem is always the budget. Yeah, yeah. always. That's right. Yeah, everybody. Everyone's everybody got has their budget. upper end yeah. of the budget. Yeah. That's right. Even even some of these, you know hundreds of thousand dollar theaters, yeah. they've, they've got a budget somewhere. Right. The, the, if you talk to them, they'll tell you, yeah, maybe I wanted to focus on the speakers or on the bass, and right. you know, I wanna do this or I wanna improve that, so. But yeah. man, you guys did an incredible job. Mm -hmm. I love the way that it sounds. Thank you. Like, I wouldn't, me personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't change anything. Mm -hmm. And um, I've- Some things. Yeah, this Thank is you. this is incredible and th it sounds great, but I, I really love the look of this. And mm -hmm. we were talking, you know, I know that you said that you, you lost a little bit about six feet from about here. About six feet. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel that way. When you mm -hmm. walk in here, it feels big. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's the ceiling heights, the ceiling height, or like you, I think you were saying, Bonnie, that really helps is having all the, you know, the, the acoustic panels and the, yeah. and the- The height the, on the posters. The height yeah. on the posters. Mm -hmm. It just really makes the room feel bigger. And one thing that's kind of weird, and I don't know about you guys, but when I finally painted my room black, at least the yeah. front part, mm -hmm. for some reason it made the room feel bigger when it, it was just yes. white walls. Right, I, which I you think, wouldn't think. You'd think it'd be right, the opposite. Right, yeah. exactly. And I think it's because you can't see the walls, so you don't know they're there. Mm -hmm. And with the acoustic panels, you can't hear the walls, right. so you don't know they're there. And it gives the illusion. It's like the masking panels. It's a perceived. Um, it's perceived. Right. Yeah. But both of you guys, Joe and Bonnie, you did an, an amazing job on this theater doing it together is awesome it's an inspiration for me when i get married hopefully you know like i told you it's it not happens. it's not a deal breaker but right. yeah. i would like to have that same experience with you know my wife yeah being able to come in and watch you know movies and stuff like that but yeah. yeah it's 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 really nice and it's really refreshing to see and that you know your stuff i know i know you like yeah. you said you, you you're you try to yeah. play it off but she knows <laughs> she knows her stuff yeah she does, she does. i know now, a little bit <laughs> yeah now, one thing that we didn't talk about yet is your your the, your your media rack. So, mm. what is the equipment that you're running everything off mm. in here? Okay, so the the receiver is a Marantz. It's an SR eighty fifteen. Okay. Um, I have a Oppo two o three for my four K. I've got a four K Fire Stick. Okay. Um, Gosh, what else is in that rack? There's a, I have a VCR, a working VCR in there. <laughs> Do you and use it? I'm on occasion. Okay. And, and it doesn't take long for your eyes to adjust to the fuzzy picture. It's kind of fun sometimes. It is kind of fun. Nostalgia. It is yeah, nostalgia. Yeah, I imagine it would be. And yeah. especially on a big screen, you know, it's not yeah. going to look as pristine as like right. 4K, but. Right. Oh, it's not even close. Sometimes you want close. that. Yeah. 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 What, no, do you, what do you pop in there? Um, 
Whatever we have. We we have several VHS, nothing in particular. I think okay. we have the original Star Wars on yeah. VCS. Oh, that we would do. Be, I'm sure that's pretty cool to right. watch. Yeah. To it, see it. I have seen it in here, yeah. Um, and some Disney stuff. Okay. Mrs. You know. Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire, yeah. yeah. <laughs> some really great R. fun know. movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> old, old, older stuff that's, yeah. you know. Yeah, so, okay, what else is in the rack? Um, I have you got an, an oppo. Yeah, yeah, I mentioned the oppo, the 203. Yeah. Um, I have a Sony 300-disc DVD changer. Oh, wow. Um, so it's got the multiple... It has, yeah, okay. it, it holds I haven't seen 300 discs. Um, yeah, 300, this, wow. Yeah, three, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't it use it much. Full. Yeah, yeah, I don't use it much. It's a little cumbersome. Yeah, you know, um, I, I guess it's a, a prequel to Kaleidoscape, maybe. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, pretty much that's basically what a Kaleidoscape right. was before that's there right. was Kaleidoscape. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So what else is in there? I think that's all. I think that's all in that rack. Okay. Yeah. And oh wait, I'm sorry. I've got a turntable in there as okay. well which occasionally okay so we have a lot of um movie soundtracks that's another love that we have oh, yeah. we love movie soundtracks i like those too and we, we have some over here uh, our concession fans. stand um, some inception our concession stand yeah, oh, concession yeah. Stand. yeah yeah we, we keep the movies over there or the, i'm sorry the albums over there okay and we do play them on occasion in here mm -hmm. So there's there's also that. Right. Yeah, and I, I did notice that you have your you have your little concession stand up in the front. You've got yeah. some what some chocolates, some candy. And That's stuff right. Up there. Yeah, some candy for the for well, I say the kids. <laughs> All right, it's me. Um, <laughs> yeah, we yeah candy. Um, but it's not just for show. Like you got, do you guys refill it when oh, yeah. things come over? Yeah. To, okay. Absolutely, uh, we absolutely. Say, please have some. You yeah, know. Please, yeah, please have some. <laughs> During yes. COVID, our candy it expired. We had to throw well, it no. all out. Yeah, because we couldn't have anybody over. That's true. In our right. theater during COVID. Yeah. Right. right. So. Yeah. Well, this is it's been a fun experience. Thank you for for reaching out to me, and you know inviting me over. Is there anything else? One thing I'll, I want to ask you: Is there anything else that you would do? Joe or Bonnie that you would do different if you had to start over or if you could build another theater is there anything that you would change anything that you would do different the only thing I'd really do different is have a little more length on the room yes <laughs> yeah I'd love to have a little more length on the right. room but <laughs> right. I'd, I'd like to have I think that we've back. done the most that we can with the space that we have right. and I'm really we, happy oh, with it. we have um yeah I think that's it as well just a little bit more length mm -hmm. all right yeah yeah is there anything that you want to tell the people of YouTube watching this? Maybe, maybe some uh, husbands that are out there that are aspiring to get their 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 wives, <laughs> their you know significant <laughs> others in into the to this hobby. Any closing statements you want to? Sure, share? sure. So if you're if you're watching movies already, you're going out to the movies. Do it at home. This is doable. This this room is done on a budget. This is, I mean, it's not. And you mentioned that before that this was a budget room. Yeah. And I looked at it, I was like, you said it was about mid-tier. This is not budget at all. I mean, even though you may have bought some stuff secondhand, you did a lot of stuff yourself, it definitely doesn't sound or feel budget. It sounds well, much, much That's better. how I kept it in budget. It's doable is what I'm saying. That you can, you don't have to go out and buy brand new equipment. You don't have to pay full retail. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do things yourself. And if you can't hire a friend, get a friend to come over and do it. This, this is very easily to do, you know, to, it, it, it's easy. Mm -hmm. Well, I take it back. It's not easy, <laughs> but it's doable. You know, we, if you, uh, if you're already going out, just do it at home. You'll save a ton and the experience is usually better. Find movies that you can enjoy together or, you know, shows that you can stream together that you'll both enjoy and get into that together. Make it fun together and, you know, get a piece of equipment here and there when it's on sale, when you find yeah. a deal. And then eventually when you have enough equipment to start, start somewhere and it doesn't have to be like all out in the beginning. Right. You know, one of the fun parts of it is building it together and you know, making it yours with your little touches. I mean, that's been one of the best parts, I think. Yeah. And speaking of, I almost forgot talking about making it your own, the little touches. You dedicated this theater to mm -hmm. somebody, right? Oh yeah, my dad. This is dedicated to my dad. It's the Don Jackson Memorial Theater for my yeah. dad. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta so sign out there. Yeah, yeah, we got a sign right above the doors. 
Yeah, he he loved yeah. movies. Yeah, and he, I, I know did. you you were saying before too. It was one of the movies we were watching. You're like, man, he would. Or you say you said that a, a lot that you would he would love this, right? He would yeah. he would love this. He would love so many of the movies that we have, and even things like Shrek. Oh yeah. Oh, he would love Shrek. <laughs> oh, he would have loved that. He loved like animated and cartoon Toy Story when that came out. I was like, oh, oh man, Dad would have loved watching yeah. this with the kids, you yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. So he just so many movies that he would have loved, and he loved musicals. You know, okay. the old musicals, right. like in oh, the yeah. 1940s, oh, you know, yeah. he loved that stuff. So right. he just, he loved being entertained and entertaining right. people. So, And, you know, to go back on a question of, you know, how this all started and, you know, where, where we came from. So her family converted a garage into a den uh, okay. for more living space. Mm -hmm. And when they did... It was certainly not a home theater. Right. Okay. Right. I mean, again, this is back in you know, the this 80s. This was like 1980. Yeah, this is in the this 80s. Was in so, 1980. You know, yeah. we're talking, you know, 19, 20 inch television. Um, no other speakers other than what came in it. But yeah, watching, we had shag carpet, though. You did have shag carpet. It was cool. But, you know, when, when we'd go over there, and, or when I would go over there, and he would throw a tape in the VCR, mm -hmm. and the lights would go out, and we That's would watch awesome. a movie, and it was. Yeah. It, was not that different of an experience than watching in this room. You know, once the lights were out and the TV was on, we were immersed. And that was probably one of my early experiences, you know, really enjoying what a home theater could be mm -hmm. and what it was, the potential for it at that point. You know, it was, it was awesome. I mean, cable was, you know, just really in its infancy at that yeah. point, mm -hmm. but you were at the mercy of whatever right. came on yeah, right. cable. And then we had our Atari hooked up to it, you know, oh, we nice. play our Atari right. on it. Yeah. So, so do you, fun. do you guys do any gaming now or none? We don't. none. none. <laughs> no, there's our never, kids have done some of that when they visited yeah. and stayed, okay. you know, but there's but. never been a game system hooked up in here. I'm well, just except not when the gamer. kids were here. Yeah. Just, we don't, yeah. we don't do any yeah. gaming right. ourselves. Yeah. yeah. So, and would you say, your fondest memories is, is would that be with your dad and going to to the movies or watching movies and doing stuff like that yeah and i mean the thing is we didn't really go to the movies as much i mean we did you know here and there but mostly it was watching movies at home you know watching movies you know mostly in once we got our den built out mm -hmm. but yeah watching movies together with my dad was always a lot of fun yes. yeah. he had some health problems so you know that was something that we could do that didn't impact his health problems right yeah. right so well you got a good memory of, of your childhood with that and it yeah. spawned all of this and like you said he he would have he would have loved this room no doubt he yeah, would have loved absolutely. it absolutely yeah well joe bonnie it's been a, a incredible experience mm -hmm. again thank you wonderful job mm -hmm. and to everybody that's watching this whether you're single married whether you watch movies by yourself with your with your you know your wife your husband leave a comment let us know what you think about joe and bonnie's uh, room it's it's incredible and I really enjoy talking to you guys, learning about your journey and learning about your, and seeing, seeing your passion that you both share in this hobby together. Cause like I said, I mean, you know, it's, you don't typically find this. So no. thank you guys. Yeah, All right, thank you, thank you. Glad you came. This, this, been been, this has been a lot of yeah. fun. Thank you for inviting yeah. me out here. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Well guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe. And if you wanna see more home theater tours like this, I've got a couple lined up. Make sure you let us know down in the comments and we'll see you guys in the next video.